Hello again guys and welcome back to Feed the Beast. In the last episode I was struggling a little bit to get my blast furnace working. I did actually figure it out before I uploaded the video. Thanks to all of you guys who did actually post with the solution. Um, but uh, f funnily enough I actually went and looked it up before I uploaded the video. But by that point I didn't really want to redo the video. Um, it was just a case of putting a block of lava either next to or beneath the uh, blast furnace. As you can see the temperature is up to 625 degrees C which is the hottest temperature you can get up to. Um, I've done a tutorial video of the Blast Furnace and how to get it up and running. It will probably already be up and live before this video goes live, so you'll probably have already seen that. Um, basically, you need to put the coal and the gunpowder in here for it to work. You fill this up with lead ingots and it turns them into steel ingots. The more lead ingots you have in the blast furnace at any one time, the more steel ingots you'll get out of it. So if I take all these iron ingots and fill it up, I'm going to put uh, two lots in there because it's, it's all I have room for. Um, so as you can see, uh, none in the output slot here. And because we've got two stacks in there, we get, well, we only got nine on that occasion. Uh, when I was doing it before, I think I had three stacks in there and I got 13 and then when it was down to two stacks I only got 12 when it was down to a single stack I only got nine so the more you the more lead you have on the go within the blast furnace the more steel you actually get out of it um, it doesn't affect the temperature it doesn't go up or down having more than one lava block doesn't make any difference uh, but if you do have the blast furnace in a colder climate such as a tundra biome it'll only get up to 580 degrees now there are, uh, are ways around that, you can use heaters and things like that, but in order to build the heaters, you need the steel to start with. So if you haven't got a blast furnace or you're not spawning the steel in, you're not really going to be able to build a working blast furnace in a colder environment. So that's one thing, that's done, that's, that's up and running, I am happy with that. I've made some farmland here. I uh, haven't planted anything yet. The reason I've done that is because I was having a quick look through the Rotarycraft handbook. And one of the things it does mention in here is under important notes, it talks about lubricant, which is needed for all the gearbox and the transmission. In order to make the lubricant, we need canola seeds. And it says canola seeds can be found in tall grass. I uh, don't really know if I've got any canola seeds at the moment. I haven't actually had a look, but... One thing that I did notice when I logged in this morning to record the tutorial video, uh, bearing in mind the actual recording date here is the 24th of December, it's Christmas Eve, uh, I went into my little house and my chest has turned into a nicely wrapped little Christmas gift. How awesome is that? Such a nice little touch that's in there. Just works exactly the same way as a normal chest. I haven't done anything to it. Um, it was just like that when I came in this morning. Uh, I don't know whether that's part of the texture pack, or whether it's just part of one of the mods, but I actually like that. That's a nice little touch. Um, do we have any canola seeds? I bet we don't. We've got seeds, celery seeds, parsnip seeds. So, no, we don't actually have the seeds we need, but we will keep looking for them nonetheless. I'm just going to break a few pieces of grass just to see if we get any. Have had a few creepers blowing things up. I know some of you guys have suggested um, turning mob griefing off which means that endermen and creepers can't actually destroy blocks. I really should get around to doing that, to be honest. Um, I was in the middle of recording the tutorial, and I literally just happened to notice, luckily it was one of the bits where I was just waiting for the furnace to get up to temperature, because even when you've put the uh, lava block next to it, it takes absolutely ages for it to get up to temperature. And uh, I was just sort of running around, building the farm, uh, waiting for that to get up, and I just happened to... I didn't even see the creeper, to be honest. I just moved my mouse in its general direction and I saw a creeper come up in that little uh, that little blue box in the top middle of the screen that tells you the name of the uh, of the block you're pointing at. It happened to just pop up and go, there's a creeper there, and I'm like, ooh. So that was lucky. Very nearly got blown up. It did take a big chunk out of the ground, but I managed to patch that over well enough for the time being. So I'm just going to do this for a few seconds, see if I can get any canola seeds, get them planted. Um, Still seems a little bit difficult to actually know where exactly to get started with uh, the Rotary Craft mod. Obviously we've got our blast furnace which we can use to produce the steel, which is pretty much required to build everything else including the crafting table. So we're going to build the crafting table next. Um, we also need to build a screwdriver which is the basic Rotary Craft tool for uh, reorientating 
uh, the rotary craft things that you build. So it works pretty much the same way that a wrench did in industrial craft and the screwdriver worked in red power and stuff like that. So we'll be building one of those. That's going to be really quick and easy. Going to build the crafting table as well. Uh, that should be quick and easy. Um, I think we... Oh, zombies burning. Didn't even realise we had zombies here, actually. Uh, I did set the... Um, server time today literally just before i started so maybe they were just hiding out under the trees but they should cook and disappear i've also had quite a few people saying that i should look into i uh, can't remember the name of the mod at the moment but there's a, there's a food mod it must be this one actually uh, where is it pam's harvest craft it could be that one uh, or is it something to do with berries oh canola seeds do you actually have some? not many you only got one lot of canola seeds um it must be Pam's Harvest Craft. I know there's a lot of people telling me that I should check check out the mods that deal with all the extra food and the berries and stuff like that. I would love to do that. It is something I intend to do. Probably won't do it straight the way though because I'd like to try and concentrate on the rotary craft first. Mainly because I think it's easier if I just look at one mod at a time. I know some of these mods do synergize well with each other. And obviously we always need food when we're playing Minecraft. So I will cover that. I want to get through as many of the different mods as possible. And I'm not literally just going to stick with Rotary Craft until it's finished. I will do a few videos on Rotary Craft, get something up and running, uh, and then we will start looking at some of the other mods. I think one of the first things that I want to do with Rotary Craft, because I feel it's always worth having a goal with these mods, if you know there's something you can build, instead of just building random machines, find something you can build and work towards it. So there is a machine or a system of machines within Rotary Craft that work the same way as a macerator or a pulverizer would. You basically put ore in them and you can get sort of increased yields out of them. Uh, but I believe it actually requires multiple machines because you actually, um, you're going to need power, you're going to need power transfer. I believe you also have to put water in the machine as well. So it's probably going to need some sort of pump. Uh, it's going to need piping. So it's not just a case like with the macerator of just popping down one single machine and going well that's all you need to do but at least that'll give me something to work towards so okay i'm going to finish harvesting grass now before this gets a little bit too tedious to watch find my way back over here to the house so if you just have a quick look in the book here uh that's the screwdriver that's nice and easy to build it's literally just a steel ingot or an iron ingot a stick and a piece of wood so that's that's not a problem at all um now the item it was under i think wasn't under where were we production machines let's look at the next page the next page there we go grinder the grinder does exactly what its name suggests it grinds things so, no no it's not that is it that one no it's not that one extractor there we go. The extractor is used to get more material out of ore. First it grinds ore to dust, then mixes it with water to form a slurry, then it presses that slurry through a filter to obtain a liquid solution, then burns the result to obtain ore flakes. These flakes can be smelted in a furnace to obtain a unit of the ore's material. Each stage in the extractor has a 50% chance of doubling the output. The machine's requirements are complex and vary from stage to stage, but a supply of water and 512 newton meters of torque at um, 8,192 rads per second will run all four stages. So we're obviously going to need power for this. We're going to need power transfer. So we're going to need some sort of engine, some sort of gearbox, drive shafts. As you can see, it needs nether rack. So we're going to have to go to the nether at some point. So it's not exactly a early game machine, but at least it does give me something to work to. So how many canola seeds did we pick? Did we really only get the one canola seed from that? That is absolutely unbelievable. I'm going to go and plant it anyway. Hopefully we'll get more. But that does seem like something that we're actually going to need a lot of. So I'm going to dump a lot of this stuff. Um, if I can actually remember how Minecraft works. I'm going to dump a lot of this stuff into the chest. Because I'm picking up a lot of junk now. I um, can't believe this chest again is almost full already so what we're going to do I think the first thing we'll do is make a screwdriver I don't have a lead ingot so I'll have to use a steel one don't have any wood on me there's some there so let's quickly just split these planks down into sticks and then I think it was a stick in the middle a plank of wood in that corner and yep there we go so we have our rotary craft screwdriver so we're going to need that now the other thing we wanted of course was the rotary craft workbench which i can't actually remember what it was called was it a work table 
work table yet. So what we're going to do here. Oh, also as well, I can't remember who it was, so I really apologise because I can't remember your name at the moment. But I think a couple of people actually told me. Um... I was complaining that whenever you hit the letter R, it would randomly shuffle your inf inventory. And someone said that going into the options menu here, and I, I've just changed the sort key. The sort key is set to um, R by default. Just change that and don't really have a problem. Don't use apostrophe for anything else. So it's not that much of an issue. So there's our work table. So we're going to need a crafting table, which is not a problem at all. We've got redstone. We have uh, steel ingots. We've got plenty of them. We're going to need some bricks and we're going to need some stone slabs. Now, stone slabs are just made from stone. We've got the stone, so that's not a problem at all, uh, but we are going to need the bricks. So I've got some clay. I'm going to put um, that clay in there. Oh, I do actually have iron. I didn't realize that I still had some left within the furnace. We are going to need to make another crafting table. It's a little bit strange because the crafting table that we have uh, is actually going to become redundant once we build the work table because the work table doubles as a crafting table. Uh, it's strange that the, the standard crafting table comes up as being part of the exact mod. Uh, I'm not too sure why that is, but um, I guess we'll find out. So we're working our way through the bricks there. I've got my stone in here. So let's go and just make some stone slabs while we're waiting for that. So there we are, a couple of stone slabs. And I will do a tutorial on this machine as well at some point. I'm sure I will. How are we doing for bricks? There we go. We've got some bricks. So let's put them in and make bricks. Now, oh, now what was the recipe? It, well, I've completely forgotten already. The stone slabs went in the bottom two corners. Crafting table went at the top. Bricks went in the middle. Um, that must be redstone with steel either side. Yep, yeah, brilliant. So we now have our work table. I'm going to pop it down there for the time being. I know we could technically replace the, the crafting table. Um, the way I understand this, the way it works, is if you uh, build something. So let's just do this because we can... Does it not just work like a normal crafting table? Oh, maybe it doesn't. I was under the impression that it did. Hmm, how very strange. Um, let's take something that we know we can make into something. Let's try the stone again. And put the stone across there. Hmm, let's have a look at that. So whenever we click on the uh, the help, it actually goes to our to our book, essentially. Not sure if you actually need the book in hand to access this, but it's worth having. So the work table is a crafting grid on which all machines must be crafted, with the exception of the blast furnace and the work table itself. So in so the, the we already knew the blast furnace and the work table were the only two machines we could build without having a work table. Um, simply use it as an ordinary crafting table. To actually craft products, give it a redstone signal or click the item in the right hand side. The workbench is also used to recharge spring powered tools. Simply put a new spring and the tool in the left slot and take the products from the right. Unlike a crafting table, the workbench stores its contents. So. I think I must have misread that the first time. You can't use it like a normal workbench. It doesn't replace your crafting table. You can't you can only use this to build rotary craft items. So that's not too much of a problem. So let's get rid of some of this junk again because we've got absolutely piles of stuff here. It's night time, the doors open, there's creepers about. So let's have a look and see what we can actually build then. Obviously we can't get straight into building the uh, whatever that machine was, because I've forgotten the name of it already. Um, what was it? The extractor, because it just requires stuff that we just cannot get at the moment. So let's have a look what we can do. We can build power supplies. DC electric engine is the simplest to make and operate. All it requires to function is a continuous redstone signal of any strength. So basically, this is pretty much like a redstone engine. Um, this ease comes at a cost, so these engines are the weakest of all, outputting only 4 newton meters of torque. 256 rads per second but at least we do have a way of producing some power so how do we build one of these well two redstone that's not a problem uh, hsla steel ingots that's not a problem uh, we also need um, two base panels and i wish the we wouldn't cover the tool tip but some sort of shaft a shaft unit so we need we need one shaft unit and two base panels so let's have a quick look at that so, how do we build a base panel? Well, at least we've found it. Base panel is just 
three steel ingots. Okay, so that's easy enough. And I'm guessing we can't do those... Oh no, so we can actually make components in the normal crafting table. So can we make rotary craft components in the work table? No, we can't. That's strange. So the work table is literally just for the machine blocks. Well, okay, that's one thing discovered. So we've made the base panel. I wonder if we can actually guess at the shaft. Heh, <laughs> there we go. Shaft unit, literally just three in a row. Oh, well, that saved me having to, uh, having to do that. Now then, what was the recipe for that? I think it was two redstone there with the shaft there. I'm just making this up as I go along now because I actually cannot remember. Uh, oh, what a guess. So, we can actually build the item here. Now, from what I understand, you can actually just um, apply a redstone signal to it and it'll work a little bit like an auto crafting bench. I'm just going to turn the rain off because it makes a huge noise. So, there we go. We now actually have a, a DC electric engine. Uh, I don't know if I want to put it down outside because I don't know... Um, if these things struggle getting wet so so there we go so the engines down it does show us a red block in front of it so obviously it has to be connected to some sort of transmission or drive shaft uh, we don't have a redstone torch on us at the moment but we can easily make one of those so let's quickly just make a redstone torch pop it down next to it see what happens so there we go we actually have power I mean not a lot of power but we have some power so that's quite easy to make no more complicated than the redstone engine by any means so now we know how to make our first pad. I'm not going to put it down here um, funnily enough now I've destroyed the redstone signal and it's still going maybe it just has some residual energy and we can pick it up using an iron pick which is also good to know uh, there's a few nasty things out there I'm just going to put it on to daylight what I'm going to have to do as well is build some sort of um, some sort of additional space really just to oh what's going on here what's that and why am i being attacked by it that was weird i have no idea what that was how strange um i don't think anything happened to me i still, still seem to have everything wow okay let's pop things we don't need back in here for now still can't believe i didn't find any extra kills a creeper there let's go and deal with him it's usually usually results in an explosion i find no don't you bother no yeah got him brilliant more gunpowder to go into the blast furnace so yeah, I'm really surprised that I actually didn't get more canola seeds from the grass. If lubricant is such an important part of rotary craft, and it certainly seems like it is, uh, I think you only need it for transmission, though. So, I haven't really done an awful lot of looking into the transmission. I'm not too sure what the purpose of it is. Whether it's just to distribute the power from one engine to multiple machines, or whether it's designed to actually adjust gearing because that's normally what transmission is transmission is normally gearing so we'll actually have to have a look and see how they work i know i'm breaking grass again but i just wanted to see if i could get any more of those canola seeds and yet i am aware of that creeper crawling around over there in the corner i'm gonna go and deal with him in a second funnily enough he's in almost exactly the same place that the uh, previous creeper was that i just dealt with um i really desperately try not to get too much of the uh, landscape destroyed here because this is like the area that I use for the uh, for the tutorials sometimes, so I don't want that to happen. Lots of little random things appearing on the ground. Uh, we've also picked up a creeper head, which is uh, fantastic. Canola seeds, we've got some more. Brilliant. So we can go and plant those. It's starting to get a lot of junk now. I'm going to have to build a lot more chests. I think I was a little bit optimistic when I built the uh, hut here. It's a little bit small. So we will have to uh, build a bigger place. So let's just have a quick look in the book again. Uh, we've got our power supply. So we've got our engine. That's our basic engine, the electric one. And we can also build a wind turbine. Uh, the wind turbine is used to generate rotational power. Uh, due to the low density of air, it does not generate much torque, only 4 newton meters. Well, 4 newton meters is also what we get from the electric engine. Um, but its design allows it to rotate at a rather rapid speed of uh, uh, 1024 rads. So 
essentially it's four times better than the DC electric engine because the DC electric engine is only 256 rads. Uh, so it produces a total of 4,096 kilowatts as opposed to 1,024 kilowatts. So yeah, it's it produces four times as much power as the DC electric engine. Uh, the efficiency of the engine is only maximized when it is high up and out in the open. Uh, objects and blocks can destruct the blades of the engine. So that's the trade-off. It's four times more powerful than the DC electric engine, but you actually have to make sure it's outdoors, whereas the DC engine can be used indoors, and you have to make sure that it's high up and somewhere where the wind can actually get to it. It's made from a hub and propeller blades. So let's just have a uh, quick look. So the hub is what have we got there oh it's a belt hub so the hub is made from okay we've got a few bits there we need a, a, a h s l a steel gear a shaft core and a shaft bearing so let's look at the blades see how the blades can be made well there's a lot of different blades here um oh was it a propeller Ugh, words was it a propeller blade yes it was propeller blade there we go so that's made with a shaft unit, a steel ingot, and a base panel. It's quite a lot of materials, actually. Um, but we should be able to do that. So let's make some more base panels. And let's make some more shaft units. And I've forgotten the recipe already. Oh, and a normal steel ingot in the middle. Okay, so we want... Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, we can also break this down into ball bearings as well. Ah, that's useful to know. So if we do that, we don't actually need nine of these. We only need eight, but we've got nine now. Um, let's make the rest of it. What was it? It was a, it was a hub, wasn't it? So how do we make a hub? To make the hub, we need a HSLA steel gear, which is just five pieces of steel in a cross. Oh, close. There we go. And we actually get three of them as well. Okay, that's fine. And then we need a shaft bearing, which is one bit of steel ingot surrounded by eight ball bearings. Well, we've already just discovered how to make ball bearings. And you get four from each one, so that'll give us eight ball bearings. So one piece of steel ingot in the middle, ball bearings around the outside. That gives us a shaft bearing. So we're getting there already. And then the middle bit is a shaft core, which is... Two shaft units and a steel ingot in the middle. So, steel ingot. Now we're short on shaft units again, aren't we? So, let's do that. A few more shaft units. Steel ingots. That and that. That gives us our shaft core. That goes there. That goes there. Gear goes there. That gives us our hub. And is it just that surrounded by... No, I'm missing something, aren't I? Um... Oh, I wonder, this must be an updated crafting table then, because normally crafting tables spit their contents on the floor when you actually step away from them. So maybe this is actually an updated crafting table. That's why it says it's from a different mod. Okay, not a problem. Let's have a look at that uh, wind turbine again. Let's see what it is we need. Um, oh, yes, of course, that's the reason why. Uh, it's a machine, so we actually need to build it in the, um, in the work table. That's the thing that's going to catch me out, the fact that you have to build the component parts in a crafting table and then you actually build the machine itself in the work table. So let's pop all those in there. Brilliant, there you go. Uh, obviously we do need to pop that outside. I'm going to put some of this stuff back in the chest. Really, You really do run out of space quickly doing this. Definitely going to need to have, have another chest. So let's pop out here. I'm just literally going to put it down just to see what it looks like and... Uh, and I'm, I'm not really going to get anything out of it because I'm not, I'm not putting it high up. I just want to plonk it down somewhere. But will it even let me put it down somewhere? It doesn't Does it have to be connected to something else? It doesn't want me to put it... Maybe you have to actually place it at a certain height for it to work. That's a possibility. Ah, there we go. So yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe you actually have to have it at a certain height before it will actually work. Um... What key is it? Is it F3? Yeah, does it tell me how high up I am? Yeah, why? 86 feet. So maybe you have to be that high up for it to work. So we know it works here. 
and it's going already of course you don't need a redstone signal for this either which is great so we can place it there can we place it on this block here no can't place it there but we can place it here so obviously you do actually have to have it at a certain height and as you can see there it wasn't going around either and that's probably because that tree was in its way blocking the uh, blocking the airflow so we now have two different ways of producing power we've got the dc electric engine which is quite cheap and easy to build also quite quick uh, does require a redstone signal can be used pretty much anywhere uh, but doesn't output that much power and we've got the wind turbine which produces four times as much power but it's a bit more complicated and expensive to build and obviously it has limitations to where and how it can be used. So what I'm going to do now I've got these, I'm going to do a bit more investigation and find out how we can connect these up to a machine and I'm going to have a look through the book and see what the best machine is to start with. Um, something that's not too complicated, something that we can easily get the materials for and get up and running and actually have something productive. And off camera I'll go around and see if I can find some more canola seeds and hopefully we can get some uh, more of those growing to make the oil. Uh, one machine that we probably will need to make actually is because we do need to make this uh, lubricant, uh, there is actually a machine... Um, which is the fermenter, the, oh no, the fermenter is the ethanol one, where is it? Uh, bedrock breaker, boring machine, pump, I'm not going to find it now, am I? Uh, there is a machine that basically is used l just to make the oil. Uh, can't actually find it at the minute, but I will find it, I'll find where it is, and that's probably going to be one of the first things that we actually need to make. I would assume it probably is. Farming machines, fan, auto breeder, bait bots. There's so much stuff here. But, yep, yeah, can't actually remember what it's called. We'll have to find. Is it one of these? Work gears, worm gears, belt hub. No, I'll have to look through and find it. But I definitely saw it before. There is a machine that is used to uh, turn these plants or the seeds from these plants into the oil. So. I assume as you need that as a that lubricant for a lot of the machines uh, within Rotary Craft, that's going to be one of the first things you can build. So we'll be having a look at that next time. So thanks for joining me, guys. I hope you're enjoying the series so far. I'm going to go off and build a lot more chests, apparently. So guys, until next time, have a very Merry Christmas. Bye for now.